Oh my god! Did she get off the plane? Did she get off the plane? I got off the plane. Welcome to Moe's Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 will they, won't they TV couples. Uh, but you can hang on to that and I'll tell her thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for your donation of my mouth. Sorry, no. For this list, we'll be looking at the best slow burn television romances. Plot points will be discussed, so consider this your spoiler alert. Did we miss any of your preferred couples? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Fran Fine and Maxwell Sheffield, The Nanny Workplace relationships can be complicated, especially between a boss and employee. So we understand why it took Fran and Max the better part of five seasons to figure themselves out. Thank you, Miss Fine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Any time, Mr. Sheffield. Any time. The tension was palpable, but everything worked out in the end. Throughout the nanny, Max attempts to keep things platonic between him and Fran. You're taking back the thing? <laughs> It's fine. I mean, in the heat of the moment, sometimes people just blurt things out. You blurt it prematurely? He's a widower and is afraid of being unable to commit to another woman. But the thing about Fran is, she's a pretty unstoppable and irresistible force. The fifth season marks the start of a new chapter in their journey, as Max pulls himself together and reveals how he feels, this time with no take-backs. Will you marry me? You know, it's all so sudden. <laughs> Number 9. Leslie Nope and Ben Wyatt Parks and Recreation Real, long-lasting relationships are built on mutual trust and respect. The things that you have done for me, to help me, support me, surprise me, to make me happy, go above and beyond what any person deserves and also stunning the heck out of your wife. Which is exactly what Ben Wyatt does. Ben and Leslie meet during the second season of Parks and Recreation, and while they initially butt heads, they quickly become close. You're a jerk. I'm sorry? Easy. I'm sorry, these are real people in a real town, working in a real building with real feelings. This building has feelings? Maybe. There's a lot of history in this one, maybe it does. While it was pretty obvious to audiences that these two belonged together from the jump, it took them a bit longer to figure that out for themselves. From restrictions on workplace relationships to election mishaps, it seems there was always something in Leslie and Ben's way. Luckily for us, this is a sitcom and things always work out. I love you and I like you. I love you and I like you. And now, with the power vested in me by the state of Indiana, I now pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> By season five, we were pretty positive they'd be together forever. Number eight, Temperance, Bones Brennan, and Seely Joseph Booth Bones. Sometimes the will they, won't they question is enough to keep a television show going strong. In the case of Bones, it was enough to give substance to six entire seasons. It's all over. <sighs> okay. I'm right here. All right. It's all over. From the very beginning of the series, Temperance, Brennan, and Seely Booth clashed over almost everything. That our victim is indeed the mythic figure known as Santa Claus. Mythic, coming from the Latin myth, meaning doesn't actually exist. No, from the Greek mythos, meaning word. He right does here. not. From religion to science, you'd be hard pressed to find something they do agree on. But despite those differences, the two bond over their shared need to do the right thing, and also a physical attraction that won't quit. Yeah, I just feel like, um, this is going somewhere. Why did you feel like this is going somewhere? I just I feel like I'm going to kiss you. The wild chemistry between actors Emily Deschanel and David Boreanaz was enough to keep fans on the edge of their seats for years. Number 7. Fox Mulder and Dana Scully – The X-Files When it comes to slow burn romances, these two might take the cake for keeping us waiting the longest. So you can clear your conscience and your name? You've been making reports on me since the beginning, Scully, taking your little notes! Mulder, you're sick. You're not thinking straight. I'm on your side, you know that. Mulder and Scully created the mold for so many crime show romances that were to come after them. But to this day, they remain one of our favorites. Come on in. Who's that for? Uh, us. 
It took seven seasons for them to initially get together, and some might say their attraction only started in the show's later years. But we think these two sort of always had a thing for each other. There were signs along the way to pay attention to. Mm, all the choices would then lead to this very moment. Watching those early episodes, their mutual care for each other becomes more than apparent, and those long yearning looks are more frequent than you think. Number 6. Jessica Day and Nick Miller – New Girl These sitcom writers love to keep us guessing. OG fans of New Girl wanted Nick and Jess to get together basically from the jump. As early as the show's first season, the pair's individual quirks make them seem like soulmates, weirdly enough. And when it comes to physical attraction, actors Jake Johnson and Zoe Deschanel really sell it. See, I fell in love with Jess the moment she walked through the door. Boo! Really? Sorry. The moment I walked through the door? But while there were high points in our favorite couple throughout New Girl's run, it wasn't always smooth sailing. Also, you know, Pepperwood, he blew it. Sometimes you don't get another chance, you know, to, to fix the mistake. It's just, look, adult relationships are really complicated. So let's hear it for Box! In fact, leading up to the final season's time jump, we weren't sure if Jess and Nick would actually make it work. Luckily for us, they did. Number 5. Sam Malone and Diane Chambers Cheers most of our favorite unpredictable couples ultimately end up together, but sometimes things just aren't meant to be. I'm rubber and you're blue. Everything you say bounces off me and sticks to you. <laughs> you love me, you love I me, do, you love me. I do me, not. Do not. Do not. Throughout most of Cheers' run, the chemistry between these two co workers is off the charts. Constant bickering defined much of their bond. You know. You know, I always wanted to pop you one. Maybe this is my lucky day, huh? You disgust me. I hate you. Are you as turned on as I am? More. <laughs> but after seasons of that, hookups and breakups, they decide to tie the knot. Hey, it's, uh, it's me. Uh, look, <clears throat> I've been thinking about you. Oh, what the hell? Will, will you marry me? Our hopes of them finally making it are shattered fast, though, as Diane ends up moving away to focus on becoming a writer. Well, here's to Diane and her success. <laughs> well, I'm going to do you one better there. I think I'm going to send her a telegram of congratulations. The showrunners fake us out again in the series finale, when Sam and Diane once again get engaged, only to call it off. Number 4. Maddie Hayes and David Addison Jr. Moonlighting Moonlighting, starring Bruce Willis and Sybil Shepherd as David Addison Jr. and Maddie Hayes, two private eyes who loved to hate each other. So much nicer than money we've spent or money we've lost. Sure does. Well, you are so beautiful when you get fiscal. Or is it hated to love each other? We couldn't say, but that constant tension kept audiences coming back for more. And who can blame them? Willis and Shepard had some of the hottest chemistry on TV, whether they were fighting or embracing. The show didn't have a whole lot of episodes, but when Maddie and David finally did get intimate, audiences went wild. 60 million people tuned in to watch the question of whether or not they would get answered, with a resounding yes. Romance is a very fragile thing. Romance, huh? Romance. That's what they want? Romance? Romance. Come on, sister, we'll give them a little romance. Number 3. Daphne Moon and Niles Crane – Frasier Having a good will-they-won't-they they couple can do wonderful things for a show's viewership, so it behooves writers to keep the tension going for as long as humanly possible. I suppose it's a bit soon for me to be seeing anyone else, but if I wait, he might not be available when I'm ready. Timing is everything. The Frasier team seemingly took that idea to heart. For seven years, we watched Rapley as Niles and Daphne danced around their feelings for each other. While Niles was the first to fall, and hard, it was clear that Daphne felt the same before the truth came out. You met Niles. <laughs> what? Niles. He's crazy about you. <laughs> 
Finally, at the end of season seven, the two's romantic journey came to a close. Or a beginning, you might say. But not a day has gone by when I haven't thought of you. Your smile, your beautiful eyes, what it would be like to hold your hands and ask you the question I never dared ask. The energy between them is so sweet, and we're delighted their story ended in a will they. Number two, Rachel Green and Ross Geller, friends. From that coffee shop kiss, to the break, to an unexpected baby, and so much more, Rachel and Ross went through the gamut of emotions on Friends. And to the writer's credit, we were left wondering what would happen up until the very end. Hang in there, it's gonna happen. Well, okay, now how do you know that? Because she's your lobster. <laughs> Oh, she's going somewhere. Things weren't always easy for this will they, won't they couple. Far from it. And sure, maybe they would have been content with some of their other love interests. But the, this can't be it. I mean, then how come it is? But when you find your lobster, you can't let them go. And while we hope Rachel got the chance to go to Paris eventually, we were glad she got off the plane in the meantime. This is where I want to be, okay? No more messing around. I don't want to mess this up again. No, me neither, okay? We are, we're done being stupid. Okay. It's you and me, all right? This is it. This is it. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Jeff Winger and Annie Edison, Community. The journey was a wild one. Amy Sosa and Jonah Sims, Superstore, proving tornadoes are the most romantic storms. <sighs> Mindy Lahiri and Danny Castellano, The Mindy Project, iconic enemies to lovers. Hey, Danny, all these waters look the same. I, I just don't. I... Elliot Stabler and Olivia Benson, Law and Order, Special Victims Unit. They certainly haven't been afraid to take their time. The most important person in my life. Olivia. And you just disappeared. Joey Potter and Pacey Witter, Dawson's Creek, the true soulmates of the series. You're there for me. Don't you ever get tired of talking? No, no, well, I don't I get, get tired. tired. Well, I don't know. I don't want to talk anymore. What are you trying to say, Joe, Pacey? Why are we standing? There's I don't. Comfort. Take comfort wherever. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Pam Beasley and Jim Halpert. The Office. In true will they, won't they fashion, the first few seasons of this couple's journey was extremely fraught. I'm in love with you. What? I'm really sorry if that's weird for you to hear, but I needed you to hear it. But in the seasons after, they continuously proved to us that they were 100% meant to be together. From the very beginning of The Office, it was obvious that Pam and Jim really liked each other. We just, we never got the timing right. You know, I shot him down and then he did the same to me and... But you know what? It's okay. But if we're being honest, they both had a lot of growing up to do before they could commit to each other fully. About how you feel when I walk in a room and about how you've never doubted for a second that I'm the woman you want to spend the rest of your life with. Three seasons of strife later, they finally did. That moment where Jim pokes his head in through the door and asks Pam on a date is still one of our favorites ever. Pam, sorry. Um, are you free for dinner tonight? Yes. All right, then it's a date. The look on her face is priceless. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.